Tim, thanks so much for being here. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I love your glasses. Thank you. I they're like blue. The, color. Yeah. <laughs> the Creative Coalition, you've been, uh, you've been working with the Creative Coalition for quite some time. Let's talk about how you began working with the Creative Coalition. Uh, I was actually, I was at the, the Sundance Film Festival, oh gosh, about 10 years ago, and I ran into the CEO, and I was at a point in my life, actually it must have been more than 10 years ago, but everything in my life was going really well. I was doing, I think, a situation comedy called Wings, so I had a good job, I had money, I had this beautiful family, and I was sort of thinking about what I could do to kind of give back, uh, you know, to the world for all this good fortune that I had, and... Uh, I started thinking about what I cared about. And I cared about children, and I cared about the environment, and I cared about various animals, and I cared about diseases, and I cared about all this stuff, but I didn't feel that I really had any gravitas when I spoke about any of that stuff because I'm not a climate scientist. I'm not uh, you know, someone that understands you know, animals or diseases and stuff like that. And she came up to me and said, we are an arts advocacy organization. And I was like, aha. That is something that I understand because I've spent my life, you know, making my living as an artist and being immersed in the arts. So um, she invited me to Washington, D.C., and I was on a train down there, and I was reading a biography of Einstein, um, and I got really, really turned on by the fact that Einstein, this huge-brained scientist, was so devoted to the arts and so devoted to the, um, the world of the imagination and um, I started speaking, and I got, I realized how passionate I was about it. And um, so I, I sort of found my belief that um, um, the arts are one of the most profound and effective change agents known to man, and sort of, um, you know, artistic pursuits are what separate us from animals and make life worth living. Absolutely. What have been some of the great uh, accomplishments in, of the Creative Coalition since, you, since you've taken part in it? Well, I think that uh, several times we've played a part um, in saving the National Endowment for the Arts, and and uh, and uh, you know, which is every few years seems to be on the chopping block. Um, we've, I think, been successful at helping uh, keep the minuscule budget for the National Endowment for the Arts what it is. Um, and uh, minuscule, the national, the, the NEA's budget uh, compared to everything else. It's like pocket lint. I mean, it's not even like a penny. Uh, but um, so we've been successful at that. And I also, I'll tell you the story. I think it was um, in the early days of the Obama administration, um, I was at the White House and I was invited to be part of this group because the administration had this big push for STEM education, right? Science, technology, engineering, and math. And I was in this thing and they're talking about science, technology, engineering, and math. And I got pissed off. I was like, what is going on here? And I, and I stood up, and I think I said something that got a lot of attention, like, excuse me, but that acronym is bullshit. They were all like, and they are like, you can't say that in the White House, but I did. And I said, first of all, anyone that doesn't already know what it is is going to think it's stem cell research. And I said, second of all, where are the arts? It should be STEAM. And uh, because it's my belief that, you know, um, it, it, technology without imagination, I mean, if you're an engineer without an imagination, you're just, you're just a technician. Um, so all the things that make technology and engineering worthwhile are much more creative, and they, they, they um, are things that uh, we can use as human beings and share. So um, I you know, made this big push to change the acronym to STEAM, which is a much better acronym anyway, and it sort of worked. A few years ago, um, there was a Congressional STEAM caucus that was uh, founded by these two women, a Democrat and a Republican. And um, in the latest uh, reiteration, this is really boring, but I'm just, just stick with me, of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, um, which used to be called No Child Left Behind. Uh, this, the official designation of the federal government is now STEAM. So arts has become acknowledged. Now, this is just, you know, we, we'll, it's, it remains to be seen how this will play out. But in the last days of the Obama in, administration, uh, arts was adopted by the federal government as a core part of the curriculum. So that, to me, was a big victory. Well, it's incredibly important because STEM is sort of training people to be a part of the job force and, and sort of engineering and, and, and science and, and, and mathematical ways. Well, when you add arts, it's like you said, you add imagination to this. It's sort of teaching people to innovate in the jobs that in, in, in the job in the job market that they get. Right. One way is teaching people how to be a cog in the machine and the other way is teaching people how to invent the machine. Yeah, absolutely. 
So now this weekend you're 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 going down to DC, right? And yes. what, you're going to do some advocating, I, I would imagine. How is this going to go? How does this play out? Uh, well, we basically have a, a troop of um, people who are, are uh, you know pretty well known in the entertainment industry, mostly, and we traipse around the halls of Congress and the Senate, and we try to convince people uh, to support federal funding for the arts. Now, this year is going to be particularly interesting and important because uh, the current administration has proposed to cut the National Endowment for the Arts from the budget. And, They're um, not the first administration to propose that, though, are they? No, no. It, this it seems to happen every, you know, 20 years or so. Um, and, you, you know, the, things that, the, the thing that, that happens that is a misconception is that a lot of people look at people like me and say, oh, you know, what does the federal government need to give you Hollywood people money for for your art? You know, fund your own movies. That's not the point at all. The National Endowment for the Arts is, as we said, is this tiny little, uh, you know, um, piece of the budget. But w the most important part of it is that money from that goes to every congressional district in the United States, in all 50 states. So, you know, here in New York, the arts will be fine. You know, San Francisco, Los Angeles, that's all going to be fine. There's plenty of people to support the arts there. But in little towns, in little uh, congressional districts all over the country, without the National Endowment for the Arts, people and children especially might not be exposed to or, or have access to participating in the arts at all. So this is actually um, not about, you, you know, Hollywood or Broadway. It's about the little towns uh, that are, you know, in the middle of the country. And I, I think that's amazing, and I, and I, and I salute you on that. And I think it's also incredible that you do this and that you're an advocate because we've taken, we liberals, I'll put myself in this category, and entertainers and artists have taken a beating in the last few months in terms of sort of, quote unquote, not being in touch with the little guy, not doing enough for the little guy, being a part of the divide. When we fight for the National Endowment of the Arts, not because it's going to fund the Broadway shows that we go to, like you said, or the movies that we watch, but because we know it's going to bring art to small towns where they may not normally get it. They're going to be exposed to a different part of humanity than they normally don't get. Right. And the, the other thing that I just want to say about, uh, about the Creative Coalition and about me is that we are not an organization that advocates for artists necessarily. What we advocate for is for human beings uh, being exposed to and participating in the arts because, you know, the thing about the arts is that it's the only... Um, pursuit that I can think of that really uh, examines and celebrates humanity, right? We put on the table all these things, love, fear, violence, anger, passion, uh, you know, compassion, uh, and, and we look at them and we, we put them in a context where you can feel something about them. And that is what makes us unique as human beings. That's the common language of our humanity. So um, access and exposure to arts also more often than not broadens people's horizons and it broadens their ability to interact with others and it makes them feel lighter and more in touch with themselves and the world around them. Exactly. And, 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 so, and there's an added benefit to all these things that are, are very human, which is that, by the way, if you have a full curriculum in the arts as a child, you're three times more likely to graduate from high school. You're going to get 100 points higher on your SAT test. You're more likely to go to college. You're more likely to participate in science, in, in, in student government. And in short, every part of your life will be enhanced and it'd be better if you participate in the arts. That doesn't mean you're going to be an artist, whether you're a a lawyer or a doctor or a, or a, you know, whatever you are, you will have a more interesting and fulfilled life. And also, you won't be putting a drain on society. You are less likely to be in the criminal justice system, on the, in the welfare system, uh, you know, suck money out of the healthcare system. So it's kind of like a vaccine against a lot of social ills. Can I tell a quick story, a soapbox yeah. story? That, that maybe. Well, when I was in high school, I had no idea what I was going to do. I thought I was going to be an athlete, but I was actually really bad at sports. I just had no access to So anything. you're delusional is what you're saying. Totally delusional. But I loved movies and I loved books, and I didn't have anyone around me who liked that. 
there was an after school program that was that was funded at this time, I think probably not by the NEA, but it was essentially after school programs all across the country. And there was a young teacher there who was just like, no, you're not an athlete, you're an artist, you need to take art classes, you need to go to theater programs, you need to do this. This is what you should do. And that was how I got to college. That was how I found a career. Like other than that, I would probably be living at home right now trying to own a coffee shop or something or, 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 or working at, at, a, at a school because I had no idea, I had no access to this sort of broader idea of how I could use my talents and, and my interests until someone came along and showed me that. This is my contention. I think that creativity is a muscle and arts are the gym, right? So if you exercise that muscle of creativity, it turns your imagination on. And if you have an imagination, then you can actually change your circumstance. If you're in a bad circumstance, you can imagine something better. If you're in a difficult circumstance, you can imagine something easier. You can find a way out um, if you keep that muscle working and alive. Uh, and it has nothing to do with being a professional artist. It has to do with being uh, you know, a productive and, and interesting human being. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. No, absolutely. I, I completely agree with you. Uh, talk to me about the campaign uh, Right to Bear Arts. Well, you know, I, I, I came up with this idea um, that it should be kind of the, the 28th Amendment to the Constitution, right? That we, that we have a right um, to be an expressive and imaginative population and that it's actually an issue of, uh, of security. That if, if we are not expressive, if, if, and if our expression and if our, our ability to imagine uh, the world differently is repressed, then um, we, we could be in, in trouble. We, we could be in danger. Um, so uh, I thought that, you know, I've been trying to change the narrative about the arts in this country because for some reason, when you say to people, uh, when you say the word arts, there's two thought bubbles that I can almost see. One is, you know, seeing fancy people in tuxedos at Carnegie Hall, um, you know, snooty rich folks. And the other is seeing like hippies in the woods wearing tights, smoking pot and being irresponsible. And that, that's not the deal. Arts are part of our lives every single day. And we just have to be conscious of it. So I want us as a culture to embrace that and to say, hey, man, we are, we are artists. We're not all professional artists, but we sing the national anthem. And, and we, you know, we go to church and sing in the choir. And we sew costumes for our kids' school play. You know, it's interesting. Um, I don't know if you have kids, but if any of you have kids, no one here has kids. I'm the only one. Okay, some people have kids. So if, you've ha if you have kids, you know, when they're four or five years old, they come home from school with something, that, with a painting. And they say, here, Mom, here, Dad. And you look at it, and you either tell them the truth, that's beautiful, honey, or you lie to them and say, that's beautiful, honey. <laughs> and you take it, and you put it right on the fridge. And there it is, boom, on the fridge. And, and you smile at them and say, thank you, I loved it. And that kid lights up because you have acknowledged that they have created something and taken ownership of it. And that goes light years towards creating a person who feels empowered. Um, so uh, I think as a culture, we need to really embrace that and stop being embarrassed by the fact that uh, that we have artists and that we that we we uh, participate in artistic um, pursuits. Uh, you know, this has now become sort of a hackneyed quote because people say it so often. But during World War II, Winston Churchill's Minister of Finance came to him and said, "We've got to take the money that we're putting towards supporting uh, the arts and put it toward the war effort." And Churchill turned to him and said, "Then what are we fighting for?" He understood that. Uh, a culture is defined by, um, you know, the, the, the arts that it creates. Well, you leave behind the arts for the most part. Society changes and, and moves and grows and expands or dies, but you leave behind the arts. The arts are what stay. The, the arts are the, the, the emissaries of our unique American culture. Right? This is what we present to the world. That This is who we are. Uh, so we need to honor that and protect it. And, you know, look... Uh, you can argue the artistic merits of anything. Um, it, it, you know, not no two people are going to love the same uh, things uh, all the time. But uh, that that impulse um, to create and to share what we've created is of utmost importance. 
So take me through this. You're marching around the halls of power. You're 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 speaking to uh, congressmen, senators about the, nas the national endowment of the arts, uh, both uh, Democrats and Republicans, I would imagine. What do you say when you're faced with someone who just says, "Nope, I, I don't think the federal government should be funding the arts at all." It's a tough one, um, and most of the time, you know, you're stymied. I've, I've faced that a lot, uh, and, you know, the, I mean, the, the cliche would be to say that Democrats support the arts and Republicans don't. That's not true. Republicans are huge supporters of the arts. They just don't believe that the federal government should spend any money on it. And my argument to them would be that our government represents our society, right? We live in a society, people who do stuff together. And what kind of government do we want to have? Do we want to have a government that doesn't even acknowledge the importance of arts to its population? I think it's a big mistake. Um, the other thing I would say, and I've said this a lot, and I've actually been surprised sometimes that it's not a more compelling argument, is that every dollar that the federal government spends on the National Endowment for the Arts returns $7 to uh, the tax coffers of the government. It's a huge multiplier in our economy because it's not just, uh, you know, mayors know this, right? If you have a little uh, uh, theater or, or orchestra in your town, that means that your restaurants are gonna do well, your cab drivers, your you know, walking traffic, your hotels uh, will, will be full. And so it, 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 it has a multiplier effect. And you know, my point is like seven to one return, like I'll take those odds to Vegas, I'll take them to Wall Street, and I think that uh, I would say to our president that you know, any good businessman would pretty much take that return. So uh, it, I think that's a compelling argument. Um, a more compelling argument for him would be, well, we'll take a lot of the money. We'll make portraits of you. We'll hang them up everywhere. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll try that. I'll try that when I'm down there this week. I'm not sure what the odds and the return of those will be, but we'll, hey, <laughs> yeah. man, we'll, we'll do that. Uh, Madam Secretary, is, uh, the finale's coming up, right? It is. Don't ask me when. <laughs> I probably should have known that beforehand. Uh, three seasons. You guys just got renewed for a fourth season. Uh, how much do you love shooting this show? Well, I love it a lot. I mean, I, first of all, it's, I mean, the crew on this show is the best I've ever worked with in 35 years I've been doing this. They're, I would have dinner with any person on that crew and be happy to hang out with them. They're just interesting, smart, dedicated people. Uh, the actors are pretty good also. I like them too. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and um, you know, it's fun. I love being in New York. I love shooting in Brooklyn. And, and um, you know, we do some stuff that's, that's very interesting. I think it's... Uh, um, I love the way that the show juxtaposes these, you know, world crises and these geopolitical uh, events with sort of the mundane family stuff. You know, someone's applying to college, someone's not doing their homework. Uh, it, it makes the, the people seem uh, relatable and real, and um, I think that's fun. Is it true that you, are you and your sister putting together a play? You're going to be in a play together in Vermont, I think I saw? Yes, my sister, Tyne Daly. And for those of you who don't know that Tyne Daly is my sister, like, come on, get with it. Because I keep finding that, like, Tyne is your sister? Like, yes. She's been my sister for 61 years. Anyway, uh, yeah, w um, this wonderful playwright named Teresa Rebeck wrote a play for us called uh, Downstairs. And we're doing the world premiere of it at the Dorset Theater Festival. Uh, at the end of June. Uh, Who is Teresa Rebeck? That name sounds extremely familiar. She's a hugely prolific playwright who's, um, oh gosh, she's written so many plays and had a lot of plays on Broadway and off-Broadway. She's, I mean, l you know, I'll look her go up. Yeah, Google her. She's a really familiar name. Uh, and, um, you know, it's a, it's a play about a brother and sister. Uh, uh, go figure. And, uh, you know, it's funny, I did a play of hers at this little theater a couple of years ago, and it was very successful, and she said, we gotta work together again, what, sh what should we do? And I said, well, why don't you write a play for Tyne and me? And she said, don't say that unless you mean it. And I said, I mean it. And then I thought, that'll never happen. And about six months later, she came back and was like, here it is. <laughs> so, we're gonna do it. It's amazing. Uh, does it feel like it's modeled after the two of you at all? Are they completely separate characters? Is there any personal catharsis that's coming along with doing the performances? I don't, I don't think it's modeled after us at all, um, which is fun. Uh, Teresa, this play that I did was about a guy who sort of falls apart. He literally, his life crumbles 
to as he falls as low as you can go. And I think uh, what Teresa likes about me is is um, seeing me trashed, <laughs> you know. So uh, when we meet this guy, his, he's in a lot of trouble. Um, and you know, I don't get to do that so often in uh, the commercial world on television, you know, because I sort of look like everything is together. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, are you saying that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm it's say, impossible it for you. It symbolizes my internal <laughs> angst and craziness. But. Uh, uh, um, but she she likes you know prodding around in the darker areas of my psyche, which is not something that people would normally th see me as. That's great. Let's get some questions from the audience here. Who's got a question? Hey, right there. Hi, Tim. Hi. Um, I'm very happy to be here, and I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate your work and the overall mission of the Creative Coalition. And my question is, after this most recent election, a lot of young people were very discouraged after working really hard and not going the way everyone anticipated. So what's your advice to keep uh, young artists and young people involved and engaged? Well, this is the thing. Politics are really frustrating. Like As I said, I've been fighting for the National Endowment for the Arts for more than a decade, and you have to keep saying the same thing over and over and over again. It, you know, we keep thinking I, 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 that we are going to reach some finish line, and once we cross it, everything's going to be fine, the sun's going to come out, and we're going to be finished. That's not what happens. You have to keep on doing it. It's a practice like anything else. So I would say keep going. The other thing is that uh, you never really know who's in a room. Uh, you know, a lot of times when I'm speaking to senators, you know, I see these, you know, good-looking men and women in suits, and they're nodding and being very charming and stuff like that. And basically, uh, you know, their thought bubble is, no, no, you're not getting anything you want. But then I look around the room, and their staff is usually a bunch of young people, and every once in a while, I'll notice someone who has real influence on this senator going, hmm. So that person five years from now could be a person who's really capable of making something significant happen. So keep going, keep talking about it, don't get discouraged. Uh, I mean, get discouraged, but then get back up and keep going. Next question. Hi. Hi. Thanks for being here and using your platform the way you are. I was wondering um, when we're gonna see more episodes of The Daily Show and um, possibly a part two of The League of Supermen. Oh gosh, well that I, that I don't know, but um, uh, Sam and, uh, that's my son, Sam Daly, and Ben Shelton, who's our director and I, are developing a feature film uh, that we hope to be, to be shooting uh, about a year from now. So keep an eye on that. It's called Just Not Right. Uh, and it'll be everything The Daily Show was and more. I think we have time for one more question right there. Hey, Tim. Um, uh, I was an extra in one of the upcoming Madam Secretary episodes, but I won't say what I was doing. Uh, I was just saying, uh, I was wondering, uh, when you were uh, uh, growing up or studying arts, was there any person, maybe a teacher or family member or a class that kind of like really influenced you or like got you, pushed you to like pursue a creative career? Um, you know, I grew up, my parents were both actors, my sister became an actor. I was surrounded by artists my whole life, and um, I wasn't particularly impressed by them. Uh, <laughs> you know, un unless, they, unless they were impressive, but I didn't, I didn't think of, you know, actors as like, oh, an actor, you know? I thought they were just kind of drunken grown-ups uh, who wouldn't give me dinner, you know, because they were telling stories. Um, <laughs> But, um, you know, it's, it's weird. I, I remember at the dinner table, there was lots of talk about Shakespeare and Ibsen and Shaw and Chekhov. And I actually managed to make it to New York City not knowing that you had to have a headshot as an actor. I was like, Dad, what? Like, seriously? You didn't tell me you had to have a headshot? Uh, so, you know, there was a practical side of, of my youth that was uh, missing. Um, but, you know, there were, there were a number of people that um, I think inspired me, uh, and mostly teachers. Um, but I think I was driven more by my imagination and my curiosity about people. Um, I make up stories about people all the time, and I'm fascinated by, you know, the things that press on a person that can that can make them do stuff you would never 
think that they would do. Um, so, you know, I had this, I, I had this, uh, I always had an overactive imagination. I remember I had a professor in college uh, who was, it was like a classic liter uh, classics course. And one of the assignments was to write a short poem. And I think it had some constraints on it, not a haiku, but something like that. And so the poem, and it was a biographical poem. And so what I wrote was, what he could not do, he pretended to. And I think that'll be my epitaph. <laughs> Tim, uh, how can people get involved with the Creative Coalition and, and, and keep up with it, especially this weekend? You can go to thecreativecoalition.org online, and you can buy T-shirts, Right to Bear Art t Arts T-shirts, um, which will look great. Here, hold one up. Look, look, there they are. Um, which look great. I yes. think there's a, there's a, even a new design. That's our old logo down there. This is our new logo. Uh, and uh, you know the proceeds go to supporting the Creative Coalition and our, our mission to uh, defend the arts in this country. Um, and uh, you know you can you can also if you if you have a mind to make sure to talk to your local politicians, especially your school board, and say, hey, uh, if my kid is three times more likely to graduate from high school with a full curriculum in the arts, why the hell are you cutting the arts out of this curriculum? Put it back in. Tim Daly, everybody. Thank you, Tim.